The NBA's always wild free agency period is off and running, with teams, players, and fans wondering which moves made this summer could shape the title race in 2023. Well, what if I told you that one of the most impactful moves of the offseason actually happened weeks before free agency? Before the offseason itself even officially began, while the finals were still being contested. I'm talking about the Dallas Mavericks acquisition of Christian Wood, and you should be too. After a surprise run to the Western Conference Final, the Mavs quickly took the first step toward building off that success with a trade for Wood. In exchange for the big man, the Mavericks sent Trey Burke, Boban Marjanovic, Marquise Chris, Sterling Brown, and the 26th overall pick in last week's draft, which was later flipped again, to Houston. With four players and a pick headed across the state, Dallas gave up quantity, but managed to snag a talented and statistically prolific player without sacrificing quality. That's a fair trade. Although the four players headed to Houston could combine to earn more than $10 million next season, they weren't going to factor into the Mavs' plans. They finished the postseason as Dallas' 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th men, respectively. That Dallas was able to turn end-of-bench depth pieces and a late first-rounder into a player of Wood's caliber is both a significant win for the Mavs and a testament to Wood's lukewarm league-wide value, which has never really matched his production. Wood's a 26-year-old big man who averaged 19.1 points and 9.9 .9 rebounds on 59.3% true shooting over his last two seasons. He's also set to earn just $14.3 million in the final year of his contract, which would appear to make him one of the NBA's best bargains. So why would a player like that be available for such a paltry return? That question has dogged Wood his entire career. The UNLV product was seen as a lottery-level talent heading into the 2015 draft, but after whispers about his maturity and focus, he wound up undrafted. Wood bounced around four different teams over his first four years as a pro, and suited up for only 51 games before enjoying a breakout 2019-20 season in Detroit that got him paid as a 2020 free agent. After a sign-in trade sent into Houston, Wood's opportunities and production continued to increase, but his league-wide reputation didn't budge. The Rockets suspended Wood for a game due to poor behavior during a January loss to Denver, after he was reportedly relegated to the bench for the first half for missing a mandatory COVID-19 testing window, then told coaches at halftime that he didn't want to play in the rest of the game. Assistant coach John Lucas also reportedly criticized Wood's effort level in the locker room at halftime that night. It's understandable why some might be skeptical of Wood's fit in Dallas, especially considering his lackluster defense. Under Jason Kidd, the Mavs have improved in that department. But can a team that relies so heavily on the defensively deficient Luka Doncic afford to add a player who's as defensively indifferent as Wood? On the surface, no. But championship teams are built upon the unseen work that happens beneath the surface. As a cap-strapped franchise with very limited draft capital, the Mavs were more beggars than choosers. To boost their championship odds given their relative lack of assets, they needed to swing for the fences and hit a home run on something or someone that wasn't immediately obvious. And for all of the baggage that Wood brings, he's still a tremendously talented, in his prime player who may simply need to find a stable NBA home. Besides a stint with the league leading Bucks for part of the 2018-19 season, Wood's never played on anything close to a winning club. Since becoming a full-time nba -er in 2019-20, his Rockets and Pistons teams went a combined 57 and 163 while finishing 26th, 30th, and 30th in the overall standings. Wood obviously needs to prove his own worth to a competent and successful team for the first time, but it's quite possible he's prepared to do that after a series of uninspiring situations that never allowed him to play meaningful basketball beyond the All-Star break, if even that long. The 2022-2023 campaign will also be a contract year for Wood, so regardless of what might happen beyond that, the Mavs should be getting the most focused season of his tumultuous career next year. You have to think I am the best guy out there. I don't care if LeBron's playing. On the offensive end, the potential of pairing Wood with Doncic is tantalizing. The Mavs are a pick-and-roll heavy team built around a pick-and-roll maestro in Luka. Wood's a dynamic dual threat on the roll and pop who should get plenty of opportunities to feast off of Doncic while simultaneously opening up the floor for Dallas' superstar.
He's an efficient roller and finisher who also canned 39% of his 336 three-point attempts this past season. If he can accept getting less of the ball in a winning environment for once, the big man can continue to produce and perhaps do so even more efficiently. Though Kids Mavs will undoubtedly need more from Wood defensively, he'll give Dallas the ability to play five out around Doncic on the offensive end without sacrificing size the way those lineups usually do. As a big who can score inside and out, space the floor for Doncic, and clean the defensive glass, Wood can fill much of the role Dallas once hoped Kristaps Porzingis could, but at less than half the price. While a limited and often unwilling playmaker for others for much of his career, Wood also made progress in that facet of his game. His assist percentage, which is the percentage of teammates' field goals he assisted while on the court, jumped from 7.8% through the first six years of his career to 12.4% in 2021-2022, which ranked in the 72nd percentile for big men. After sliding to the middle of the pack on offense in Kidd's first season at the helm, the Mavs should be elite on that side of the ball next season. Defensive issues might sink the Mavs at some point in 2023, and you can quibble about whether Dallas' roster beyond Doncic contains a player good enough to be the second best star on a championship club. But as evidenced by their run to the conference finals, the presence of Doncic alone gives them at least a puncher's chance. Rivals who always understood the power of Luka's magic were at least able to take solace in knowing Dallas had few avenues to meaningfully improve around Doncic. Wood has his warts, but he also possesses the kind of upside that should now have those same rivals sweating. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.